What's going on, y'all? This is JT, drummer from Snarky Puppy, and I am with the homie Ryan Storm for Storm Sound, and this is my rig rundown. So let's get into it. Follow me. Let's go. Journey time. Um, I guess the easiest thing is to just start with brands. So I am a Yamaha artist. Drums, these are the Yamaha Live Custom Hybrids. It used to be just the regular Live Custom, which was their oaks when they went from the oak custom then it went to the live custom now it's the live custom hybrid so it's like an oak and it's a hybrid wood which i can't remember which the hybrid wood is but they sound great for this band um we've used them a lot i've used them a lot individually and as is the other guys who are also yamaha guys uh, larnell and jameson and we all kind of agreed that this would be the the best kit for the band for a touring kit so sounds amazing every night um, size wise, I'm, me and Jameson like the 20 inch, so it's a 20 inch by 16. Larnell, because he's so tall and has a long leg, he likes a very big, long bass drum. <laughs> Uses a 22. <laughs> uh, standard sizes for Tom's, just 10, 12, 16. Same as pretty much what the other guys use. Um, I'm pretty much the only one out of those guys that use just one floor Tom. They all do either one up, two up, two down. Larnell still puts the deep snare drum in the floor, floor tom, but I tried that, and I was miserable for about a week. I was like, I just couldn't function because I never really used two floor toms except in the studio. Hadn't figured that out yet. Studio feels perfectly fine. On stage, I freak out. I don't know what it is. Um, snare drum-wise, everybody's always kind of cracking up at the fact that we use so many snare drums, but it's not just because it looks cool. It literally is because of the music. Um, it's been a two snare band even back when Sput. Sput was kind of the one that kind of started that with the deep snare. As far as in this band, how ridiculously deep it is to the fact that we use a kick drum mic on the deep snare. That was something that they was doing back when Sput was in the band. And then when we got around to Culture Vulture, we started, because it was three drummers on that record as well, a lot of people didn't know that. It's three drummers on that record, but it's only two of us at a time. But Sput started changing the setup on like every song he played, he switched drums, including snare drums, it was ridiculous. So there was a couple of songs where he had a really, really tiny snare drum. If you see his videos, he loves his little cocktail kit. And he used that snare drum on the song. So when we started going out, I started trying to incorporate the third, uh, third snare drum for that song and a couple of other songs. But when we got to Immigrants and it was all three of us, me, Jameson, and Larnell on every song, that's where the third snare drum became a requirement because three drummers were all using multiple snare drums each just to cover the parts is why we have three now. So it's still the standard main snare, I should say medium. So like low, medium, high is basically what we think of it is. But it serves a purpose and every song that we have, there's a reason for all three snare drums. So, snare drum wise, I'm rocking the, the Live Oak Custom Hybrid snare. This is the Yamaha Recording Custom Stainless Steel 14 by seven. And this is, is, is old, oldie but goodie. This is our old standby. Um, this is the old Japan shells, uh, brass, but it's the, you can tell by the old lugs because we don't make these anymore. But this is an old Japan brass snare drum, and I believe it's a 4 by 14 maybe 4 and a half by 14 but I think it's a 4 So, heads-wise, I'm an Evans guy. Love them. Great choices. I have an assortment of different Evans heads on all these drums. Um, Cymbals-wise, I'm a Mino guy. Love them as well. I'm, I'm the holdout. The other two guys are... I'm not going to mention their name. Um... <laughs> So for this gig, they kind of focus on the cymbals. For a long time, it was really dry. Like, again, it was kind of Sput's thing. Sput Nate was using really, really, really dry cymbals. Like, it was this series that I was using, the extra dry stuff he was using. And it took me a while to get used to that because I never used dry cymbals on anything I ever played. So, But over the years, since the music has changed, especially with this last record with Empire Central, um... I was able to kind of go back to some more standard symbols. They're still kind of dry in context and dark, which I've always loved. But I was able to kind of start using some different symbols. So it's 
Like, this is just something I'm trying. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it there or not. Who knows, but we'll see. But the rest of the setup is standard. I always use at least three crashes. These two regular crashes and what's my sizes? So 15 hats, it's a 12 inch splash, 18 crash. This stack is something that I got from Nate and Sput when I first started using stacks because I never used stacks. Um, it's a 12 inch uh, Gen X China on the bottom with a jingle and a classic custom splash on the top. Has a nice rattle to it and clap and but it cuts through really well and then if you tighten it it can get even shorter so that's cool to play with and fun to play with this is a 10 inch vintage splash my trusty 22 inch ride sand ride this is the benny grab uh line i love this symbol uh 20 inch byzance crash um uh, this is also a crash that the first one i ever played was sputs and I fell in love with this, this particular line of symbols with mine on this uh, traditional extra hammer thin series. I love these symbols. Uh, this is another stack that I got from Nate and Sput as well. It's a uh, same thing. It's a Gen X China on the bottom of 14. This is a 18 inch uh, vintage trash crash. And then on top of it, that same splash that I have here. And I got that. Nate has a very similar stack to that, but that's definitely got it from them because I had no idea what to do with stacks. So this one is a dual crash. This is more of the trashy, just really explosive, really fast, but really dry. Cuts through great with the music, but tone. <laughs> many different sounds as possible. I always like to have different options sonically, even in the cymbal range. So it always hooks me up and takes care of me. Love it. Um, beaters wise, I don't know if you can get in and see this. This is actually my first time on this run trying this. I've been using a company called Lowboy uh, Beaters for a long time. But if you can see, that's the one with the leather instead of the felt. I've been using their, they call it the felt daddy, but I've been using them for a while and I've used their wood beaters as well. And I kind of wanted to find the combination in between the leather and the felt because what I found, what happened with the felt, this used to stick out like above and I wore this thing down flat, almost like it was a wood beater, but it actually, I'm glad I did that because I actually love this beater now because it's just enough felt on it that is in between that and a wood beater. But I saw them come out with, I guess a couple of years ago, they had a leather front for this. And I was like, that would probably be even better, you know, combination in between the two. So I'm trying that leather daddy out for the first time and I absolutely love it. I recommend you try it out if you kind of like wood beaters, but you want to find the in between felt and wood, try these, um, try the leather daddy. Or you can just do like me and play one so much that you wear the felt completely <laughs> down to the wood. <laughs> um, this is my other, I love this thing, my, my seat. It's a company called Porters and Davies. It was basically the combination of, you know, if, if you ever ran ears, which I do for this band, um, the thing you used to have to do was have the butt kicker. It was a company where you mounted this magnet basically that was like the magnet of a sub you mounted it under your throne butt kicker had an amp that they made that you could buy it with or you just ran it through one of the power amps through the monitor console they send you a signal back to this basically the same concept as if sending it to your sub they just sent it to the seat and it rattled your seat with the kick drum which for if you run ears it's perfect um, but for stage volume it's also great because it eliminates you know the sub and everything else I found this company, I actually first saw them at NAMM and I can't remember when, and it was just one of the random things you walk by the booth. What is that? Sat on it and was like, basically they took the concept of the butt kicker and just took it up about 50 notches to 100 notches. They basically took the magnet and what would rattle in the seat and built it inside this. So if you look on the bottom, 
you'll see that's where the jack actually plugs into and the magnet is actually inside of the drone. That comes from here, which is their brain. This is the Gigster brain, which is great for travel. It's a great size. They make another one, several different sizes. They got one that comes in its own flight case. It's really great too, but they're the same engines primarily. The thing that sold me the most on this unit, one was the accuracy, whether I feathered the bass drum or whether I hit it really hard, the accuracy of how it tracked everything that I played on the bass drum was accurate on the seat. The butt kicker wasn't as accurate as this is. It was still great, but this is just a hundred times better. And the fact that this is a standalone unit. The old butt kicker units, you had to get your line fed to you by the monitor console. This you can take, which was the game changer for me, was that I could use this in the studio, small clubs, and I always basically had a sub. Because you could run a mic from this unit directly, put it, I normally point mine at the porthole, and it's an in-house unit. You don't have to have a feed from anywhere. Just as long as you have a mic, plug it in, turn it on, you got a sub. In the studio, total game changer for me, because you never have that. You All you have is your cans. So that to me was worth it enough just to have it in the studio to be able to use, much less small clubs, but it's kind of expensive, but if you were buying a butt kicker back in the day and you buying that and make it power amp, it's basically about the same price, but a thousand times better. So I love this. Speaking of the ears, I'm just running just a regular small mixer because all I'm getting is a signal directly from my monitor world. So that's just a Yamaha mixer. And I started running ears with this band because I found myself, I've never liked loud stuff in my ears. So even when I had a monitor and a sub, traditionally I was always wearing earplugs, mainly because of the cymbal sounds. And because by the time I got my monitor to where I could hear everybody, and in these big ambient rooms, it was just so loud, I couldn't hear any clarity of the band, especially from like bass, horn players, when they play real soft with the soloing, I couldn't hear anything. So I was like, I'm already wearing earplugs all the time. And I started wearing ears with other bands, with cover bands and other pop guys I was touring with. So I was like, I might as well start wearing them with this band. And that's basically what I did. And it cleared up everything. The biggest thing that I had a problem hearing was Mike. Because Mike's amp is in front of me and it faces that way. And since his amp is so far up front on the stage, he runs his volume really low to where I could really barely, some nights I couldn't hear him at all. And I would have to feed him into my monitor so loud, but just once it's coming through the speaker really loud in here, it just turned into a rumble. So I'm like, when I put my ears in and I had him turn the bass up, it's literally like I'm standing in front of his bass amp. I hear all the clarity, all the attack on the strings, no matter how loud or soft he plays, I can hear it. So it just made everything easier for me to hear, which allowed me to run my volume and my ears lower made me play a lot more, not so much soft, but confidently because I could feel everybody, the tempos, I could feel what everybody was doing. So, which is in this band, the dynamics go from like, so for me to be able to, you know, accurately hear everybody is, is kind of the best way to play this gig. So just so you can really be into it. but. Yeah, man, it's fun. There's a lot of drums. I don't use this many drums except for this band. Like, if I play with anybody else, it's just a regular five-piece kit, about four less cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, I still use three snares with certain people I play with, but not all the time. I just swap them in and out for different songs, but never like this. So it's always fun when I come back into it with Starkey Club because I have to get used to playing all of this again. Because in between, I'll play with like Mark Materia or something. I'll be playing a small kit, like a one up, one down, two crash was and a ride, and that's it. And then I come back to this. It's like, <laughs> what am I going to do with all these drums and cymbals? But it's fun, man. A ton of fun. My little jingle stuff. I got all these little toys, big fat snare drum stuff, which is the same with the little rings, my big fat snare drum. Now, why I went through this company and got this, they called, okay, I can be corny. <laughs> Big Fast Nerd Drum calls this the donut. So I found a company that custom makes these and this was a donut with sprinkles on it. Yeah, 
corny yeah but why not <laughs> i think that's it my sticks are vic firth i use the aj ones thanks to spud again he told me to try these out and i love them and i've been playing them ever since he was right um i do use people ask me about this too i use grip tape i have really oily skin so i when i start to sweat these become weapons of mass destruction <laughs> on stage to anybody that may be standing in front of me or in the near vicinity you you might get hurt <laughs> so i just found these make it a lot easier for me like i know vic firth and zildjian make the dips with the sticks and i've tried those and it just didn't feel the same and i also like the fact that i can reuse these over and over and over again like i'll use these until they fall apart and then i'll switch them but it just helps me hold the stick better like there's sometimes i'll play without them depending on what the song is but if it's a really active song and i'm playing kind of hard or busy these save me and everybody around me <laughs> but yeah i think that covers it i think that's about it this is jt once again thanks ryan thanks storm music see you guys out on tour we'll be out to the end of the month i think so catch you in a city near you bless you God bless you. Thank you. See ya.